Hello, welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to focus on the some of the metrics for evaluating machine learning or deep learning models. Specifically, we're going to study the confusion matrix and other metrics such as precision recall, etc., that are derived from the confusion matrix. So let's get started. The confusion matrix is typically used for a binary classification problem where we have two classes and we want the model to be able to distinguish between those two classes. As an example, let's say we have a bunch of audio files in our data set and we want to know which audio files contain the siren sound. So we divide the data set into two classes positive class containing all the audio files that have the siren sound and the negative class that contains all the audio files containing sounds other than the siren sound. So we have, we have two classes in our data set and then we train the model to learn to be able to correctly predict these two classes. So then once the model is, model is trained, it makes some prediction and then we, we draw a confusion matrix to understand how well the model is performing. On the right is a confusion matrix. There are several conventions to draw a confusion matrix. They all convey the same thing, but they just look different. In this video, we're going to use this convention, where on the y-axis, we, we have the label actual class. So we know that in the actual class, we have certain number of negative samples and we have certain number of positive samples. And the model is also going to make prediction. And there are two possible predictions. It's either going to predict a sample as, a, as belonging to a negative class or belonging to a positive class. So then we divide the we divide the confusion matrix into four parts. We have true positives, true negatives, false positives, and false negatives, and we are going to learn what those are. On the diagonal, we have true negatives and true positives. The true negatives are, so if we have a sample that actually belonged to a negative class and the model also predicted it correctly as belonging to a negative class, then that is a true negative. Similarly, let's say we have a sample that actually belonged to a positive class and model also correctly predicted it as belonging to a positive class, then that is a true positive. So our goal is to maximize the number of true positives and true negatives because those are the correct predictions. Now, on the opposite diagonal, we have false negative and false positive. Let's look at the false negative first. So false negative is where we have a sample that actually belonged to a positive class, but the model incorrectly predicts it as belonging to a negative class. So that is false negative. Similarly, here, the sample actually belonged to a negative class, but the model incorrectly predicts it as a negative, as a positive class. So that's a false positive. Let's go into more details with an example. So here, going back to our example of detecting a so siren sound from a, from a bunch of uh, audio files, Let's say we have total number of 100 samples. And out of those 100 samples, 10 samples belong to a positive class and 90 samples belong to the negative class. So this is the actual label for the samples. Then after prediction, after the model is trained, it makes some prediction and the distribution of the Prediction is as follows, which is shown in the confusion matrix. So here, the model out of the 10 actual positive samples, the model is able to correctly predict 
six of them as positive and it incorrectly predicts four of them as negative. Similarly, out of the negative 90 samples, it correctly predicts 80 as negative and incorrectly predicts 10 of them as positive. Now, looking at Justine's numbers uh, is not easy because it's hard to do the calculations. So it's better to derive some sort of like uh, rate, like what's a true positive rate or true negative rate to get a better sense of uh, how, the, how well the model is performing. So there are a bunch of metrics that are derived from the confusion matrix and we're going to go into the details of all of them. The first one is accuracy. This simply means how many positive and negative samples were correctly classified. So it does not talk about just, it does not care about whether all the positives were correctly classified or all the negatives were correctly classified. It, it just, it's a, it's a blanket statement that says, what is the correct prediction? So it takes all the correct predictions, which is true negatives, and true positives and it tries to find what is the percentage so in this case it takes all the correct predictions and divides that by the total number of samples we have which in this case was 100 and what we get is uh, accuracy here in this case we got 86 which looks pretty good but it's not it's it's a bad measure for our problem because in our case we had imbalanced data we had 90 positive 90 negative classes and 10 positive classes so if it if the model predicts all of the negative classes correctly but none of the positive classes correctly we know the model didn't learn anything but the model accuracy is going to be pretty high so it's a it's it's a it's a misleading number especially when we have imbalanced data so we have other metrics that we can rely on. The next one we are going to study is true positive rate. The true positive rate, also called recall or sensitivity, the question here we need to ask is, out of the actual positive samples, which in our case was 10, how many were correctly classified? So we want to know what is the percentage of true positives so here we take the the true positives and divide that by the actual number of positives and the number we get is true positive rate also called recall which in our case is 60 percent then the second measure is precision the question here we ask is out of all the samples predicted as positive how many were truly positive? So these are all the samples that, was, that were predicted as positive. Out of this, only six were truly positive. So that's precision. And in our case, it's 0.375, which is pretty low. Next measure is F1 score. So now precision and recall give us a better metric to evaluate the model for this problem but it's even better if we can get like a single number so that's where f1 score is going to help us f1 score is essentially a harmonic mean of precision and recall and this is the formula to calculate it so if precision and recall are both high then our f1 score is going to be high but if either one is low then our f1 score is going to be low and we want the F1 score to be high because that, that means our model is, is predicting good. It is a good model. So for this problem, since our precision was quite low, the F1 score is also quite low. Um, typically, we want it to be closer to 9. So the number is 0 to 9 and closer to 9 is better. So that's the F1 score. The last measure we have is the true negative rate, also called specificity. Here the question asked is similar to the question asked for the true positive rate. The question we are asking is, 
out of actual negative samples, how many were truly negative? So that is the true negative rate, in which in our case is 88%. So these are all the metrics that we typically use for binary classification problem. So we learned about the confusion matrix, how to calculate accuracy, precision, recall specificity, and the F1 score. The fundamental question is, how do we know which metric to use? The answer to that question really depends on the problem that we are trying to solve. They're all used for binary classification problem. So basically, if we have imbalanced data, then accuracy is not a good measure, like we saw in one of the examples in the, in the, in the video today. So you really want to analyze all of the, all of the metrics. And then based on the problem, based on the distribution of the data set, you want to decide which one is a good metric to measure the specific model that you are trying to create for a specific problem. So that's all for this video. I hope this was helpful. And then if you're finding the videos on this channel helpful, please consider subscribing. And with that, I will conclude here. Thank you. And I will see you in the next one.